So there are different types of surgeries, and if you can, uh, the take-home message here is what is the best surgery that will suit you? And I say this in general as far as the gold standard, and I will prove it to you from my experience as a board-certified general surgeon and as a board-certified plastic surgeon. As you will see shortly, the end block removal is the gold standard versus the total capsulectomy, which basically means that you're removing the capsule in its entirety, 100%, because the word total, not 90%. Uh, Lori, in between clinic this morning, showed me, uh, my office manager, uh, a series uh, of pictures uh, of a patient who had the explant done but 90% of the capsule was removed. And if you saw the capsule, you would see that it has been removed in multiple pieces, 10 to 15% at a time, and then all of a sudden it's clustered together as a picture and said a total capsulectomy. So the goal here is that you don't want the capsule to release its contents, and as you will see shortly, because that's where the disturbance lies. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to show it to you. The other common problem that I find from my training and per my discussions from the many different plastic surgeons that I talk to, you come in into the plastic surgery office, you complain of chest tightness. It is consistent with what is a grade three or grade four capsular contracture, which basically is the capsule getting hardened. And then what the surgeon ends up doing inevitably is to basically score the capsule, which means taking a bovicari, which is a cutter, and then opening up or releasing the scar such that it basically, that pressure is alleviated and it opens up, and then it's able to accommodate another implant, larger size, because you now have increased the volume and it's not a tight capsule no more. So that's in red for a reason, along with the implant removal only, which is certainly not recommended, as you will see shortly, you want to remove the capsule because that's where the burden lies as well. So what is an end block resection? As you will see, it's an implant and the capsular tissue that surrounds the implant uh, that is removed as one entity, one piece, so that the implant has not seen air and that it is encased within the capsule and there is no spillage. So you may have an end block removal and ruptured implant, but guess what? It has not leaked into the chest cavity, and so that's pristine and preserved, and you don't need drains, you don't need to do a frank washout, and the susceptibility of potentially not removing the entire diseased uh, implant capsule does not exist for that reason, because you have removed that entire capsule along with the implant as one entity. So it's a difficult procedure to perform, because if you're off by a couple of millimeters, you could go into the chest cavity, which is a major problem because you could puncture the lung, and this is what you see, the pneumothorax, you have to get a chest tube, and it's basically an emergency because uh, the patient's not able to breathe. It's, uh, the patient's going to be gasping for air, and so on an anesthesia table, as you will see, that is a, what I would call a surgical emergency where you have to intervene surgically and putting in a chest tube. And so because you are in patients who have had the implant put directly underneath the muscle, which means on top of the chest wall, the rib itself, uh, it's a very challenging operation, especially when the capsule is very thin. So docs who are trained in trauma slash chest reconstruction, micro uh, dissection, and again, I have to say it is a very difficult operation. Not everyone can do it. Um, and you have to be comfortable about operating in the chest, very important. It's not as simple as just peeling it off or removing it. You have to actually bovie it off, and as you will see shortly. Um, the capsule adheres to the ribs, the muscles, uh, which are in the close proximity, and hence this is a difficult operation. If your surgeon comes, again, take home message, and says, I did the end block in 25 minutes, that's virtually impossible. Your surgeon, uh, like I was telling one of my patients, how are you? I said, I am tired because I just finished an end block, and it took three hours. So on a day that I do three, for example, it essentially takes me from 8.30 in the morning till approximately 6.30 or so, uh, giving four hours or so, three to four hours, 
of time in order to doing it correctly because it's a very tiring operation. You just have to keep an eye on the bovi and you have to dissect around the entire capsule and you have to do a meticulous dissection because you, don't, you cannot go fast. It is very similar to, if you can imagine, patients who have had bowel surgery. You have the small bowel or the colon that's adhered and you have adhesions within the abdomen. You have to very meticulously with the tenotomies, with the scissors, being able to dissect the bowel because you don't want to puncture the bowel, then you're going to have spillage of the contents. That's a major problem. Similar, very analogous dissection. Um, and from my journal surgery years, I find that I extrapolate and say, you know what, this is very similar to uh, that type of dissection. And so, um, as you can see right here, uh, this is a uh, patient that I just did, uh, this is, I always prefer the IMF because you don't want to go around the duct, very limited access. You cannot get an end block removal through a two centimeter nipple incision. It's virtually impossible unless you're a magician. Number two, you cannot go from the axilla. You have to have, if you can get an implant, just lay it flat and it's scar tissue, you have to have at least 11 or 12 centimeters of base length right here, as you can see. And you will see on the videos that I uh, basically have on my uh, YouTube channel, Con Plastic Surgery Academy, I clearly mention, and I put a ruler here and I measure, this is the capsule, as you will see, this is the fatty tissue. Now this is abnormal tissue uh, right here. I want to go ahead and remove it. I don't want to remove just the capsule. You want to remove anything that's indurated that may have potentially silica because remember it bleeds. There is a micro bleed and you can tell by the consistency and texture of touching the capsule. It's very, very dramatic. You will be able to feel the hardness. And so um, as you will see here on this one, you have muscle and um, I'm dissecting directly on top of the muscle and the implant is being removed. As you can see and appreciate the thinness of the capsule, it's almost transparent. Um, and I'm directly on top of the muscle. If I go a couple of millimeters deep, I can run into the intercostal vessels. Can, there can be a lot of bleeding. Um, so this is, again, very tedious dissection. Uh, and again, as you can see here, uh, you have the skeletal muscle uh, right here. And then I'm essentially dissecting over here with the bovi medially superficially, posterior, and then laterally, working centimeter by centimeter, millimeter by millimeter, such that I'm able to essentially shell it out, literally, with the entire capsule and the implant removed and block. Um, now, this is, again, as you can see, a nice, viable, healthy flap. I'm directly on top. This is the distance, and you can see, even with this, uh, lens, uh, it does not deliver with ease. And as you will see on the videos, um, you have to push it a little, but enough of a dissection such that it will allow for the explant uh, of the implant with the capsule as one entity, one piece, one system. And as you can see right here, this is post removal. And this is the skeletal muscle right here. There is just from the palpation from the fingertips, there is no residual capsule. There is no hardening of the tissues, there is no residual disease left behind. And here I am removing the entire capsule and block, and this is right on top of the muscle, as you can appreciate again the significance of the dissection. And here I am lifting, it's a nice pocket, right, shiny, good, native, healthy tissue. From palpation, I can tell this is good, healthy, viable tissue. There is no residual disease. Now, as you will see shortly, as I'm inside, my goal is to remove the implant, to remove the capsule as one system, which is the end block. Number two, if I find any abnormal fluid, it's going straight to cytology, as you will see on one of the pictures, because I have to rule out BIA ALCLS, which we all know is the breast implant associated and a plastic large cell lymphoma because this is the cancer that we know that's associated with the implants, primarily with textured implants, hence France uh, banning it a couple of months ago. Um, and so, uh, and this has been very well uh, established um, and published um, that 
uh, any f uh, f abnormal fluid needs to be sent to cytology. Now, as I'm inside, as you can imagine, you have a chance to put your hand inside and you can get the perfect breast exam because you're actually touching the breast tissue, the native tissue, and you're not only touching it from the inside but from the top, and then you're palpating and making sure if there is any masses, guess what, I'm gonna send it straight to pathology because I could be sitting on breast cancer. Now, as you will see, um, as I've pointed out in my many talks, one out of eight or nine women are gonna get breast cancer. And so this is a very good time and opportunity for me to do a good exam and see if there's anything pathologic. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it for two reasons. Number one, it could be cancer. I wanna make sure I'm not gonna sit on it, especially when I was in the chest cavity. Number two, I wanna make sure that if this lady wants to get a mammogram, which she's gonna get uh, per uh, AMA standard guidelines, I don't want it to pick up on a mass that I was sitting on Number two, I want to make sure that there is no residual capsule that an ultrasound or an MRI is going to potentially pick up on and the patient is now going to get unnecessary biopsies because it was a scar that was left behind. So palpation and a full exam, the third aspect of the surgery itself is critical and crucial because that's the window of opportunity that I have and the patient has in order to definitively and conclusively say, at least on my exam, I did not find anything that needs to be sent. Now, just to be complete, mammogram will pick up on calcifications that basically put the red flag up that warrants. Now, these are non-palpable. Now, that is uh, something that needs to uh, be looked into and uh, needs to be biopsied. And, b and unless you biopsy, you're not going to know what it is. And you have to look at it under the microscope. So as you can see, it's a nice deep pocket. It's a huge area. Now, I'll tell you, so far, I have not put a drain in in any of my patients. Uh, and I say this with confidence because I took my time to dissect. The bleeding is essentially minimal uh, to none. This is a skeletal muscle, nice, good, viable, healthy tissue. Uh, there is no, I do the other side, then come back and I find with confidence there is no bleeders because I've addressed it all. And again, as you can see right here, this is a nice deep pocket, good, healthy, native tissue remaining behind, no diseased tissue, nothing hard, nothing indurated, nice and viable. And as you can see right here, I'm now working on the left aspect of the breast tissue and block removal and uh, meticulous dissection with the bovie cautery, which is the way to dissect so that there is no uh, bleeding and you're essentially riding on top of the capsule. And as you can see right here, end block removal of the right and left. Um, and uh, as you will see on the videos, again, on Khan Plastic Surgery Academy, how I cut through so that essentially for the first time, the implants are now exposed to air. So if there's any spillage, any contents, ruptured implants, silica, whatever it may be, it is all contained. There might be mold inside. There might be abscess. There might be pus. So again, very important. So right and left, as you can see, there is no uh, implant that's visualized. And then uh, this is another second set. As you can see, when I was dissecting and palpating, as you can see right here, abnormal tissue. I removed it with the end block resection. I don't want to leave this behind. If I do, mammogram is going to pick up on it. Patient is going to get an unnecessary ultrasound, possibly an MRI unnecessary biopsy. I'm doing the exam. As a board certified general surgeon, I'm trained in doing mastectomies. I'm trained in doing lapectomies. Obviously, I don't do that for a living because I'm a board certified uh, plastic surgeon, but that certainly enhances my aspect of being able to provide for removal of this abnormal tissue. As you can see, I didn't remove it here because it was nice, but over here it's pathologic and you can see these bumps. It's relatively hard material. Uh, it may be fatty necrosis, it may be cancer, God knows what, but the pathologist is going to look at it, and I write down, rule out malignancy, very important. And again, end block removal, 